Fischer projections are a fast way of drawing molecules that have chiral centers. And they're especially useful for molecules that have a lot of chiral centers, like sugars. So the name Fischer comes from the last name of a chemist, Emil Fischer, who was working a lot with sugars. And he had to draw the chiral centers a lot. And as you've seen, determining whether a chiral center is right or left-handed depends on whether the fourth group is coming out at you or going away. And so you'd have to draw those bonds three-dimensionally all the time, which can be really time-consuming. And it also makes, and it also makes, um, it can also make structures look really confusing. So Emil Fischer developed a new way to draw molecules called the Fischer projection that arranged the tetrahedral molecule so that all of the vertical bonds are going away from you. So if we were to draw this molecule here um, in a, as a Fischer projection, the vertical bond going up, you've got that carbon in the middle, vertical bond going up is going away from you, vertical bond going down is going away from you, the horizontal bonds are coming out at you, but notice how long it's taking me to draw this molecule. It's much faster if I can just draw across and by convention have all of the horizontal bonds be coming out at me and the vertical bonds be going away. And so that's what these Fischer projections are. You're just drawing the molecule so that all the vertical bonds are going away and the horizontal bonds are coming out at you. And that lets you give the three-dimensional arrangement of the molecules the stereoisomerism, it lets you communicate that, but in a way that's really fast and easy to draw. So in this case, they just want to know the configuration for each of these chiral centers here. So we do have a chiral center in this first molecule because it's bonded to one, two, three, four different things. So that carbon in the middle there, this carbon, is indeed chiral. It's bonded to four things. And so we would just want to know the priority of each of those. So first we'll look at the atomic number. So the atomic number of the hydrogen, uh, the atomic number of the hydrogen is one. For the nitrogen, it's seven. For the carbon, it's six. For the carbon on the bottom, it's six. So the highest atomic number, the one for the nitrogen, gets the highest priority. So this is going to be priority number one. The lowest atomic number, the hydrogen, gets the lowest priority, so the hydrogen is going to be priority number four. And then the carbons tie, so you'd want to make a table, for one for the carbon on top, one for the carbon on the bottom. This carbon on top, going away from the chiral center, is bonded to oxygen, oxygen, and oxygen. So we'll put that in its table. The chiral center at the bottom, this carbon, is bonded to oxygen and two hydrogens. At CH2OH, that looks like CH2OH. And you can see that it's bonded to hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we put those in descending atomic number, and then we can compare those tables one row at a time. The top rows both have oxygen, so they tie, but when you go to the second row, the top carbon has is bonded to the atom with a higher atomic number. And so this would be higher priority of those two, the other one will be three. So we have those we have those priorities. The second step is to make sure that for the fourth thing is going away. And this is where you have to be able to read a Fisher projection. You have to know that this horizontal bond is coming out at you. Because by convention, all the vertical bonds in a Fischer projection are going away from you, the horizontal bonds are coming out at you. That means that when we go from 1 to 2 to 3, we're going to have to switch whatever configuration we think it is. So when we go from 1 to 2 to 3, it's counterclockwise. You would think it would be S, but because 4 is coming out at you in this Fischer projection, where all the horizontal bonds are coming out at you, we switch it, and it's actually R. So the configuration for this chiral center here is R. It's the right-handed version of itself. So we can do that same procedure with B. We've got our chiral center right in the middle. Um, you can demonstrate that to yourself because you have this aldehyde on top, the carbon double bonded to oxygen, single bonded to a hydrogen. 
you have a hydrogen on the right, you have a methyl group on the bottom, and you have what's called an alcohol, the OH on the left. So that's four different things. And so that star, the carbon in the middle, with the red dot around it, that's a chiral carbon. It's going to come in two versions, a red hand ver it could exist in two versions, a right hand version and a left hand version. We need to figure out which version we have. So we write down each of the atomic numbers. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8, carbon 6, hydrogen 1, carbon 6. The oxygen has the highest atomic number, so that gets the highest priority of 1. Hydrogen has the lowest atomic number, so that gets the lowest priority of 4. The carbons tie, so you'd want to make a table for each one, the carbon on the top and the carbon on the bottom. Going away from the chiral center, the carbon on the bottom is bonded to three hydrogens. Going away from the chiral center, the carbon on the top is bonded to oxygen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Now we can compare those two tables one row at a time. Oxygen beats out hydrogen, and so this top carbon, which is bonded to the oxygen, has the higher priority, and the bottom one would have the lower priority. So now that we have these priorities, that's the first step, assigning priorities based on atomic number, we'd look and make sure that 4 is going away. 4 is not going away, it's coming out at us. The only way you would know that is if you knew how to read a Fischer projection. In a Fischer projection, all the vertical bonds are going away from you, and all the horizontal bonds are coming out at you. Because this hydrogen is written in a horizontal bond, it's coming out at you. Now, because the, four, the fourth priority group is coming out at us, we're still going to go from 1 to 2 to 3, but we're going to flip whichever configuration we would think we'd get. And when you go from 1 to 2 to 3 in this molecule, you go clockwise, so you would think it would be R. But 4 is coming out at us, so we flip it, and it's actually S. So the configuration for this chiral center is actually S. It's the left-handed version of itself. One more exercise like that, C. So here, we do have a chiral center in the middle. You can confirm it because we've got the CH2OH. You can see the OH there is an alcohol. Hydrogen, it's a different thing. CH2CH3, so like an ethyl group on the bottom. And a, an OH, an alcohol on the left, but here just an OH with no CH2 attached. So that's four different groups, and the carbon in the middle with the red dot around it is chiral. So it'll come in two different versions, a right-hand version and a left-hand version, and those will fit into the world differently, behave differently, and make, other, make the things around it behave differently. So we need to know which version we have. The first step in that is to assign priorities based on atomic number. Hydrogen has an atomic number of 1, carbon 6, oxygen 8, carbon 6. The highest atomic number, the oxygen, gets the highest priority, so that's 1. Lowest atomic number gets the lowest priority, so hydrogen is 4. The two carbons tie, and whenever atoms tie, you want to make a table. Table for the bottom and the table for the top. The carbon at the bottom, is bond going away from the chiral center, is bonded to two hydrogens and a carbon. We'll put those in order of descending atomic number. The carbon at the top is bonded to two hydrogens and an oxygen. We'll put those in order of descending atomic number. Now we can compare the tables one row at a time, and we see that the top row of the carbon on top is bonded to has a, an atom that within a higher atomic number. Oxygen beats out the carbon, and so this group on the top gets the higher priority of those two. Okay, so we have our priorities assigned. The next step is to make sure that the, fourth, the group with the fourth priority is going away from you. Here, it's not. It's coming out at you. And the only way you'd know that is by understanding how to read a Fischer projection. In a Fischer projection, all of the vertical bonds are going away from you, and all of the horizontal bonds are coming out at you. So this hydrogen, which is drawn in a hor horizontally, is coming out at you. So we're still going to go from 1 to 2 to 3, but whatever configuration we would get, we switch it to the other one. So when we go from 1 to 2 to 3 on this molecule, you go clockwise. So you would think the configuration would be R, but the fourth priority group is coming towards us, so we flip it. It's not R, 
it's actually S. So this chiral center is the left-handed version of itself. So the rules for finding the for assigning the configuration of chirality are really the same. They're still the same Conningold prolog rules, CIP rules. Um, what's different is just knowing how to read a Fisher projection, knowing that the vertical bonds are all going away from you and the horizontal bonds are always coming out at you when you see these straight up and down figures. And the advantage of these figures is you can draw lots of chiral centers really quickly and easily. And it's useful especially in biological molecules like sugars that have a lot of these chiral centers.